As we keep rolling about on-the-seat technologies, our final speaker before the break is Dr. Ryan Bartlett. Dr. Bartlett comes to us from Compass Minerals by way of Monsanto and has been working on technologies and innovations throughout his career. Ryan currently oversees a team of researchers in both North and South America, focused on soil fertility, plant physiology, and plant health. Please help me in welcoming Dr. Ryan Bartlett. Okay. Thanks, Luke. Thank all right, well, thank you all for um, the time this morning, and, and thank you so far to the presenters. I think that this presentation you will find is a continued segue um, into the discussion that we're having today from biologicals and efficacy to nutrition. And I'm going to focus primarily now on nutrition as it relates on the seeds. So you know, I think your presentation set it up well. appreciate that. Thanks to AgriAuthority for the time. Um, always a pleasure to work with this group and a great group of folks here to, to talk with. So I'm going to focus on Compass Minerals' new platform that we've branded Rocket Seeds uh, that we've launched over the past couple of years. And just for those of you that don't know, Compass Minerals is a global company headquartered out of Kansas City um, under the New York Stock Exchange ticker CMP. Uh, everything from salt that you find on your roads from a de-icing perspective uh, to magnesium chloride to uh, the only producer of sulfate of potash in North America a large business in Brazil that was under the name Protochemica, now Compass Minerals to Sewell. And so, large portfolio, but today I'm really going to focus on the North American and South American portfolios of rocket seeds. So, what are seed nutritionals? And this isn't new, but I just wanted to provide a bit of definition as it relates to what we're going to talk about here this morning. People have been putting zinc on corn for a long time. It's nothing new necessarily. What is new that I'd like to discuss is the ratio of macro and micronutrients that we're applying to seed, as well as some of the data that we get from a compatibility perspective, what it does from a morphological perspective to the plant, and then ultimately how does it result in yield. So the formulations that we have to offer, we'll talk through a little bit more in, the, uh, in future slides, but both dry nutritionals as well as liquid nutritionals um, that are specifically developed to be put on seed to aid in the instant that that seed begins to germinate. And so you can have an immediate impact on root establishment, an immediate impact on the vigor of that seed as it's coming out of the ground, and really making sure that we're doing it in a way that doesn't require the farmer to take an additional step. So cases where we're applying in the planter box as a talc or graphite replacement, places where we're applying uh, at the seed treater, whether it be at the retailer or on farm in Brazil in some cases, um, that allows us to not amend the current operation, but help to finish off that seed treatment slurry in a better way. And then compatible for the most part with all standard traditional chemical and non-chemical seed treatment packages. So safety with biologicals obviously is important. We've heard some of that earlier today. And we're going to focus on some of that data. So looking at, you know, why do we want to add nutrition to the seed? And for me, the number one thing that we get out of this is consistency. No, everybody so far has talked about snake oil. I wasn't planning on talking about snake oil, but my hope is that after taking a look at some of this information, uh, people will begin to believe that nutritionals can be a great component to biologicals to help to provide that consistency that we're looking for on farm. Um, and this is one of the things that, that can really help do that through boosting early season year, uh, vigor, looking at root development, to specifically to mitigate stress both early season and then later on in the season. Um, advantage to traditional seed finishers. So instead of using talc or graphite in the planter, why not use a fluency agent that also can bring some value to that seed, not just the fluency through the planter. And then finally, again, making sure that we're not asking a farmer to amend their current operation. And I will talk about yield, but I'm not going to start with yield. So looking at the beginning of really where, where we're positioning this portfolio, for the most part is as a, as a talc graphite replacement in the planter. So for the most part today, um, farmers are applying some form of fluency agent directly to their seed, whether that be in the, in the planter box or through a central hopper, um, in particular to help mitigate wear of the machine itself, so the mechanical parts of metal on metal within the planter, but also to make sure that you get good seed singulation. I think everybody's familiar with the term singulation, making sure that when we want to plant one seed in one spot, we get one seed there, not a skip or a duplicate. Um, very important today with, with precision, precision Ag and the components that we have to be able to track that on our planters and in our cabs today. 
So one of the things that we've looked at as we set out to develop a nutritional that can replace talc or graphite is ensuring that we maintain the fluency and the singulation. So what you see here in the graph is looking uh, at a comparison of untreated seed. Uh, so this, in, in this case, untreated nutritional seed. It's a standard seed treatment slurry that contains fungicide and insecticide. And you'll notice the light colored blue bar is under dry conditions. The dark colored blue bar is under wet conditions. And this really played out this spring when we had a lot of plants <coughs> rolling under non-opportunistic, you know, non-prime conditions where we're planting, it's wet, it's rainy, it's misty. Um, there could be high humidity in the, in the air. And what we see is when you're using the right fluency agent, you're able to maintain that level of singulation and make um, that rate of seed flow going through the planter. So you don't notice a huge difference when it's dry, when conditions are perfect, but when conditions aren't perfect, we're able to uh, distinguish between that traditional seed treatment and adding the nutritional as a fluency agent to the planter box to replace talc or graphite. The other thing that I want to talk through um, is looking at the boost to early season vigor. What you see here on the left is a control seed treatment, again, standard fungicide insecticide. And what you see on the right contains a product that we call PMZ Dry. And this is that planter box talc or graphite replacement that contains nitrogen, a little bit of phosphorus, a little bit of manganese, and zinc, as well as a proprietary formulation of carriers that bring that to the seed, provide the fluency, provide the singulation, but more importantly, provide some early season vigor. So what you can see here, not only you see a little bit of change in the top growth, but what we talk about with our customers is what's going on below the soil. So a lot of farmers are going to gauge their field on what they see from the road. A lot of consultants gauge their field by what they see from the road. And in the case of 2018 trials with this product, um, you can see the dark rows here, and this was in Marshall, Missouri, uh, contained the PMZ dry formulation on seed. So you do see that greenness, you see the bigger. But we also talk about farmers, let's get in there, let's dig some plants, let's take a look at the roots. And it becomes extremely profound with what you see going on below the ground. And that resonates very well with a farmer where you're standing there in the field, you have a plant um, that has you know, a great root system from the nutritional, you have a plant that has a standard root system, they automatically begin to talk about, okay, that plant's gonna do a much better job when it's looking for water later in the year during a dry period. That plant's gonna do a much better job of taking up the nitrogen and the other nutrients that we're putting on as inputs. And so it's a good conversation to have with the farmer staying at the end row because they can see the results right there in person. The other thing that I want to discuss then is just this, that specific root development piece. And I'm going to focus a little bit on soybeans here. Um, we've talked through corn, but in soybeans, the thing that we look at not only is that root development, the number of root hairs, the amount of root surface area that you get, but also nodulation uh, with the Brady rhizobia. So looking at that symbiotic relationship. And in soybeans, the seed treatment that we use focus on other nutritionals that help to stimulate that process and that symbiotic relationship to really stimulate nitrogen fixation earlier in the season. And what you, what you get as a result not only is, it, is a better root system compared to a standard seed treatment, um, but you also start to see better top growth, you see darker, greener color, and it's that nitrogen coming through along with the micronutrients that we're supplying directly on the seed. The other thing that, we, that I want to mention here a little bit is as an industry, we've grown to accept a little bit of phytotoxicity with our seed treatments. So not all actives have it. And we discussed Olivo earlier today and the halo effect, and that's one that I think is fairly extreme. But if you look just across our standard fungicide, insecticide seed treatments, we've, we've come to expect a little bit of phytotoxicity. And for the most part, those actives are well worth the money that you're putting on the seed. But there's ways that we can overcome that phytotoxicity by having the right nutrients present to really mitigate some of that stress that those hard chemistries are providing. The other point that I want to make here is looking at other nutrients that are taken up by the plants as well. So this is a corn um, trial in our greenhouse that we have in uh, south of Kansas State. <coughs> multiple replicants, multiple um, trials all put together here in one, and you can see some of the data here specifically. But in a standard seed treatment, again, fungicide insecticide, Compared with that standard plus nutritional, and in this case we put on nitrogen, phosphorus, manganese, and zinc. Of course you can see you know, a little bit more uptake in the tissue of zinc and manganese. But what you also see is requisite improved uptake of boron, 
iron, copper, and I didn't go through all the list of all the nutrients here. But the point is, if you're establishing a better root system, if you're more efficiently utilizing the macronutrients that you have present in the soil, you'll, you're able to then also utilize more efficiently the other micronutrients that you're not directly providing to the seed. So for a farmer, this again is a good, not only ROI of the product specifically, but looking at a way to maximize the efficiency of the inputs from a plant nutrition perspective uh, by just applying some directly on the seed and influencing that root structure early in the season. So this is something that then also translates to later, later season um, information and, and looking at biomass both above the ground and below the ground. So again, corn at V3, um, and this is a greenhouse trial. Multiple replicates, multiple trials here combined. But you see above ground tissue biomass increase of 54% at V3, and then an 86% increase in root biomass at V3 uh, by using WinRISO and some of the other technologies out there that's to do root scans and help us to uh, measure this more, more proactively. So the point here is that as we build a better root system and a better foundation for that crop throughout the season, we can more easily help to mitigate stress that that crop might encounter, and we're establishing just a better base to ensure that we're maximizing the yield potential that's coming through the genetics in that seed. And of course, all of that is really meaningless if we don't talk about yield. So a lot of folks tend to jump straight to yield, which I think is, is fine, and that's what the farmer ultimately wants to know. But I think it's important for us as an industry to also build the story as to why, to help overcome some of that snake oil mentality. And, and I'm a big fan of sharing all of the data the negative data included. I think that if we look at more replicates, higher quality data, um, we're going to grow as an industry and, and get more consistency and earn the respect that we need to be able to promote these things uh, on the farm. So just to walk you through a little bit of the data set here, this is North America only. I haven't included the South American data. Uh, three years, 14 states. These are all either large-scale strip trials or large farmer side-by-sides, where a farmer has split a, split a field or split a planter, where they've included the nutritional uh, on half. This actually covers multiple crops. So I wanted to show that not just the corn data or just the soybean data, but also look at, there's some data in here from peanuts. There's a lot of data in here from wheat. Um, there's a little bit of data in here from canola. And so just looking that these things tend to perform across the board, uh, regardless of the crop type or the, or the geography. Um, 191 total different locations here. There are some cases where one location may have multiple uh, reps or multiple strip trials and that's all included in one bar. But the thing that's key for me is not so, whoops, I gotta go back. Not so much the yield increase of 4.2%. I think that that's respectable, but it's back to the win rate and some of my colleagues already talked about win rate earlier. In this case, you know, when we look at all that data over the last three years, sure there are cases where we have variability in our trials and we can't claim a win. It's still about biology. Um, but at the same time, 75% of the time, we, can ensure, we, can, we believe we can ensure a farmer that they're going to see a yield increase of around that 4%. And so if you look at the cost of these seed nutritionals, whether you're applying a liquid, whether you're applying a dry in planter box, uh, on average, we're looking at a cost of about $2 per acre. On corn, it's a little less. On soybeans, a little more. On wheat, it's a little less. But on average, we're about $2 per acre if you look at the application. And if you look at that average return across all these trials, we're at a conservative $13 return. If we do the data just on corn, we're closer to 20. So I think the return on the investment for the farmer is there. The consistency is there. And we, we believe that adding nutrition into other actives and other components that the farmer may be interested in trying can help provide consistency for those products as well. So, you know, in the future, looking at some of the key biologicals that we've already discussed in combination with the right nutrients. Or in the case of Profarm, where you have, you know, biostimulants in combination with nutrients. I think that's what we have to start focusing on as an industry, is how do we bring more things together so that it's easy for the farmer to apply, but also so that the farmer can, can see consistency year over year. That's where we have to really go against this whole snake oil mentality. So as we look at the specific products that we have to offer, um, you know, these were all really to work on farm or at the retailer. The two liquid products that we have, PMZ Liquid and Molly Liquid, are specifically designed to be put uh, on at a retail location or on farm. 
the PMZ products, both dry and liquid, are really focused for the most part on monocot crops. Corn, wheat, for the most part, is the data that we have. But we've also shown great results in grain sorghum and other grass crops. The molly-based products are then really focused on soybeans and other legumes or nitrogen-fixing crops. And this was really developed with uh, our, our Brazilian colleagues. Uh, this molly liquid has been sold in Brazil as under the brand Upseeds for now about three years with great success, and we brought that to North America. But again, really focusing on other things like iron. So we talked a little bit about SDS earlier. We found that applying a little bit of iron on the soybean seed can really help mitigate some of that, even though it's early season can really proliferate that response into late season and ensure that you've provided a little bit of coverage for that. Um, but also looking at the other components that we have here, like uh, nickel and cobalt, key cofactors in the nitrogen fixation process. And so being able to help a legume crop really stimulate that relationship with the Brady rhizobi, as I discussed earlier, and help to maximize nitrogen fixation uh, really gives the plant a boost all season long. So applying that directly on the seed, we've shown helps us form nodules earlier. We get larger, healthier nodules. And then there's also a foliar program that goes with this that I'm not going to discuss here today. We have a product in North America called Pulse um, that contains nickel, cobalt, molybdenum, plus other trace elements that goes in the tank with the first herbicide. And that's sort of the extension of promoting the symbiotic relationship between the root and that Brady Rhizobia. So start early with some on the seed, come back a little bit later with some in the tank with the herbicide to continue to stimulate that. And the one thing that I want to discuss here a little bit today is a new product that we've just launched into our, into our portfolio, and that's called Molly Shine. And this was really after a lot of discussion with our retail partners here in North America. Soybean seed treatments today are, are full, let's say. They contain a lot of different components. Uh, they tend to produce sticky seeds. Sometimes you get bridging, uh, whether that be coming out of the treater or whether that be later in the seed box or in the planter. And there's a need for a seed finisher to ensure that we're sort of drying off that, that seed treatment slurry and making sure that those seeds are easier to handle uh, as we get to farm. So Molly Shine again takes advantage of some of the technologies that we've already discussed, uh, looking at having iron, manganese, uh, molybdenum, and zinc in that formulation. Um, along with some nitrogen, some phosphorus. But really looking at taking advantage of that nutritional component plus a seed finisher that can be used at the end of the seed treatment slurry um, and some shiner. So it makes the seeds look very pearlescent. Uh, you know, standard things in the industry, but this brings the nutrition along with it. So that's something we're launching here at ASSO that we're excited to get folks to try at the retail level. But just to, to wrap us up, you know, I want to talk about um, how we can optimize other seed treatment packages and make sure that when we are putting on those hard chemistries, I don't think anybody's here saying that fungicides and insecticides are going to go away long term, but I do think we have to think about the combination with other products, whether it be biologicals, whether it be nutritionals, to ensure that we maintain efficacy of those products where we can and really continue to show a good return on investment for the farmer. So in conclusion, um, we believe that providing the right nutrition on the seed can help alleviate stress that the plant encounters later in the year. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is just that morphology. So when you can clearly go into a field with a farmer or with a retail partner, do a root dig, pull up a soybean plant and show one that's been treated with nutritionals, count the nodules, pop some of them open, look for that nice pink center to know that they're active. It's a good conversation to have at the field to ensure the farmer and your customers that, that this seed treatment is working. But the other thing that I'd like to talk about too is just the efficiency of fertilizer. And it came up a little bit earlier and perhaps it might come up later in our regulatory session. But we're gonna to continue to have pressure on the farmer as it relates to nitrogen and phosphorus. We've seen it in other places around the world. Um, there are parts in the US where that's a hot topic, obviously. By applying a little bit of nutrition on the seed, we're not saying you can replace much of the N and the P that you're putting on the soil but you can get the plant to provide a more robust root system that takes advantage of that NNP that you're already putting in the soil, leaving less to run off into waterways or, or, or leach in, in other ways. So it's a very efficient use of a little bit of fertilizer directly on the seed. And the last part is just thinking about the seed treatment traditionally is an insurance policy. Fungicide and insecticides go on so that we can mitigate pest pressure. Most years there's some level of pathogen pressure in the soil that we need that fungicide present for. 
Some years we may have insect pressure, some years we may not. By adding a nutrition to that component, the farmer can more consistently see a response year over year. So you're, and nutritional isn't specifically looking for pressure from a pest. You're overcoming potential environmental issues, whether that be climate, but you're also giving that early season boost to the seed. So it's, it's, you're not trying to kill things here or control things. We're consistently seeing that increase. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you all very much for the time. Um, please go to compasscrops.com or take a look at us uh, on Twitter. This Compass Crops Edge program that I have listed over here is that more full season view of what we talked about. So the fundamental of it is applying the right nutrition to the soil, the right nutrition to the seed, and then coming back with the right nutrition to the leaf. So if you're interested in our full program, um, please find me. Thank you. Ryan, thank you very much. Thank you.